Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've got five top tips for you that might just help you get your guitar or your woodworking project over the finish line with a little less stress. And if you stick around to the end, I've even got a bonus tip for you, so stick around. All right, so masking off and removing excess masking tape can, can be a little bit fiddly, especially if you want to do it cleanly. If you do it with a knife, sometimes you end up cutting into the substrate, you know, cutting into the piece of wood, you end up scratching it. All sorts of horrible things can go wrong. The tape can start to, to snag and, and peel off. And that was a headache I was having a lot when I was masking my guitars. Uh, that was until I went and did Michelle Pellerin's finishing course out in Quebec, Canada. And he showed me this ingenious method of beautifully um, removing masking tape using a hardwood dowel and a little bit of sandpaper. So rather than cutting through the masking tape with a knife, what you're gonna do is essentially cut through the masking tape with a piece of sandpaper and it's gonna perfectly follow the contour of whatever it is that you're trying to mask. And what we're doing here is we wanna stop just as we start to see the wood showing through and that's it. And you just pull it away and it is the most satisfying, satisfying little procedure. All right, so tip number two. One of the things that I like to do is to remove material from the face of the sandboard, especially around the perimeter, to allow the sandboard to, to move a little bit more to give me the response that I'm looking for. And the way, this is a tricky thing to do because you know, you've already got a very uh, accurately and, and, and very thin piece of wood with no way of checking really um, how thick it is. You know, so you, you're kind of removing material blind or at least you would be if I didn't have this magical block of wood with a screw in it. Now this is a tip that I picked up from Urban Samoji and like many of his jigs and fixtures and tools, it's ingeniously simple and amazingly effective. So I have a piece of quarter inch, sorry, three quarter inch plywood here. It has a screw and you know, say I want to remove five thousandths of material from the face of my soundboard so I can adjust quite accurately how much of the screw, the tip of the screw is pointing out the underside of this piece of plywood. In this case, five thousandths of an inch. And I'm not gonna actually do it on, the, the, on my beautifully sanded guitar here. But what you can do is create, using the screw tip, is create a series of scratches wherever you want to remove material. And you know that those scratches are gonna be five thousandths of an inch deep, or however, however you've set your little tool. And so what I can do here is create some scratches and take my scraper. And once those scratches are all gone, we know that we've removed five thousandths of an inch. We've done it safely, we've done it accurately. We're not sweating. And it's, uh, I love this little guy. It's such a cool, ingenious little tool. And it's just a piece of plywood and a screw. All right, so tip number three, and this really is a kind of broader tip, which I'll get onto in a second. But at this stage of the build, um, it's time to pin the bridge, right? It's time to locate the bridge. And this can be a little bit fiddly. You know, some people do it with bits of string or tape or clamps. It can be messy, things can go wrong. And at this stage, you don't want things to go wrong. So what I like to use is a bridge location jig. And this is the latest one from Elevate Luthery. We have these adjustable um, kind of scissor arms. These are gonna attach to the side of our neck. We've got this little hook here, which is gonna hook over the end of the fingerboard. I've set this up for my Model M guitar, which this is, it's a 25 inch scale length. This is how the jig works. It's all based around your scale lengths. And what I'm gonna do here is butt the guitar, butt the bridge, sorry, up against these two stops. And you'll know then that the bridge is in the right spot. It's perpendicular to the center line 
And if you join us in tip number four, I will show you how I pin the bridge ready for masking. This tip can be used in so many different ways and it's essentially a semi-permanent fixing using uh, masking tape and super glue. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do is use these little blocks to perfectly hold the bridge in place. I'm gonna position these all the way around the bridge so it can't move once I take the jig off and it'll allow me to then go ahead and drill the holes. So what I'm gonna do is use a bit of glue boost. This is super glue activator. I've got a piece of masking tape. Really, really important that you put the masking tape onto the, the soundboard first or any substrate that you're planning on using this technique for. So I've got my little blocks. They've also got some masking tape on. It's just gonna help. It's gonna make it easier for me to remove them after the uh, process is over. I'm just gonna put a couple of tiny drops. You really don't need, need much. And put those on the blocks up against the edge of the bridge. I'm just gonna hold that in place, let the glue boost do its magic. So we've got masking tape, super glue, masking tape. A beautiful little sandwich which is gonna release, he says, really nicely once this is uh, once this is all done. Alright, so we've got all our blocks in place. We can now very carefully take away the elevate bridge positioning jig. And we have our bridge firmly located. That's not going to go anywhere. And we can look to drill our holes. It's super easy to take these off. At the end, just remove the masking tape. No marks, no mess, no lines, no pencil, no nothing. I love it. This is one that is just a game changer. So when you're carving the neck on your guitar, it can be really, really difficult to make sure that the back of the neck is perfectly straight along the length. You know what it's like? You're there with your files and your rasps and your spoke shaves and you've got your straight edge and you're measuring all the way along and you've got little lumps and little bumps that no matter how hard you try, you can never seem to chase out. You're there with your file and your sandpaper. And it's a nightmare. I used to have this problem all the time until we got the board, the magic board with a little bit of sandpaper on it. This is a tip that I picked up once again from the legendary Urban Samoji. And this is just a board with some sandpaper attached. I've been extra clever and uh, I've used some Velcro backed um, hook and loop paper. I've got some Velcro on there so you can change out the grip to whatever, you, whatever suits you. But basically this board is roughly the same length as the shaft of the neck. You've got the sandpaper on there and with this kind of little dancing motion, you can sand the back of the neck uh, perfectly flat, perfectly straight, and um, it's just an absolute game changer, like I say. So get yourself a little board, get yourself some uh, hook and loop sandpaper, fill your boots. All right, so thanks for sticking around and watching this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, do all the usual stuff, like, like and subscribe. It really, really, really helps us to grow the channel and for us to keep making videos like this. Put in some comments about what you'd like to see next. And because you've been so good and because you've stuck around, we're gonna give you a little bonus tip and this is a really nice one. If you've worked with dark timber, chances are if you're a luthier, you have. It can be really, really difficult to make accurate markings with a pencil. You know what it's like, you'll draw around something, you'll go to cut it out, and you're like, where's that line? I'm trying to catch it in the light. You can use colored pencils, but they tend to be softer, they tend to break, and you know, we're trying to deal, we're dealing, we're dealing in accuracy here, people. So, a tip that I really like, and I can't quite remember where I saw this. I think this might be like a traditional cabinet making technique, but you're gonna take a scalpel and very carefully, you're gonna trace around So now we have a very, very thin, very, very accurate line. And we're gonna take our piece of chalk 
and we're going to basically just trace over, go back over that knife line. We're filling up that knife line with chalk. And rub off the excess chalk and you can see that you've got a beautiful, extremely fine white line in your dark timber to work to. Cut that out, you'll see that all day long. Super accurate. Working to knife lines, that's what it's all about. So there you have it. Five slash six, hopefully really useful little tips that you will be able to deploy and make the best guitars in the world. See you next time.